But we've got Pastor Sepulveda with us. Yes, I'll step out of the way. Come yeah, on over. we want to hear from him. And uh, got some follow-up questions from after last night's message. I really enjoyed that. Pastor Sepulveda. All right, so, so definitely enjoyed the message last night. I liked uh, how you did that. I liked hearing about uh, life in Australia, a little sure. bit of the history of Australia. And... Um, I, I did not realize that Australia was as wealthy as it was. You know, I, I didn't realize it was one of the more wealthy countries like that. Yeah, sure. Actually, that's something I totally missed in my sermon. I, I was uh, I was a little nervous. I had mentioned at the beginning uh, I'll come back and explain why a, a Chileno, a, a, Ch a Chilean, yeah, I wanted was in Australia. Was so was that the question? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I asked my parents, uh, when did you migrate again? It was 1977. So they were born in Chile, both of them uh, Chilean nationals. Then they migrated to Australia, and, and there was one day I said to my dad, Dad, why did you leave the family? Why did you, why did you leave you know, all the people you know, all your support, go to a country where they, they, they knew English, but it wasn't their, their best, you know, obviously, uh, language, a second, a second language. And he said, you know, it was just to give my children the, the, a, a, a good opportunity, because it is tough in Chile. It, it is mm -hmm. tough to make something of yourself. And he just wanted to give us a, a good start for the future. And so I was going to tie that into the wealth of Australia. So that, that was the, the key reason why, uh, you know, my, my father decided to make that move. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I appreciate him for that because I do visit my family from, in Chile from time to time. And it is tough. It, it is mm -hmm. tough to, to make something of yourself. So uh, Australia is definitely a land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it comes with the other side of the coin where it makes people's hearts not as receptive to, to receive the Lord. Mm -hmm. And now, and now you mentioned how the country was founded in the late 1700s mm -hmm. or discovered. Now, do you have your own indigenous people out there too? Because I'm assuming there was people that were already living out there. Correct, correct. So yeah, we have the Australian Aboriginals okay. uh, that that were living there. If you you know, according to the science textbooks, for the last what is it, hundred thousand years, mm -hmm. of course, uh, we know that's ridiculous. But uh, uh, you know, there's still quite a l large population of Aboriginals. Um, in Australia, but many of them have been uh, mixed with, with the white man. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have one uh, family in our church in Sydney that is an, from an Aboriginal background. Okay. And he was sharing with me how um, somewhere, in, somewhere within, and I, I couldn't get the facts behind this, so I didn't cover it in the sermon, but uh, the, somewhere in the, uh, one, of the, one of the Aboriginal faiths, they speak of the, the great spirit and his son. Hmm. So apparently there was a knowledge of, of, of God and Jesus Christ, the son of God, and it got somehow lost, you know, mm -hmm. throughout the years. So, huh? That's interesting. Mm. Probably went back to uh, the Book of Acts. I'm guessing. I could, most likely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's interesting. So, is there much, you know, history or anything? You know, there's much anything ancient that you can go see over there? Not really. I mean, unless you want to look at some cave paintings. Mm -hmm. um, Australia, like I said, is a very uh, new nation. Mm -hmm. It. It's, it's interesting because a lot of nations have their own culture. Mm -hmm. Whereas Australia doesn't really, it's kind of like a merging of many, many cultures. Mm -hmm. Many people, uh, you know, migrate in a lot of uh, different communities. Uh, you know, if you go to Sydney, you've got an area where you know there's a lot of Italians. You go to an area, there's a lot of Portuguese. There's a lot of, you know, uh, Assyrian or Middle Eastern. And so we've got this hodgepodge, especially in Sydney, of, mm -hmm. of all these nationalities. And Australia is very much this hodgepodge of, of community, or different backgrounds, I should say. Okay. Now, I thought it was interesting when you were talking about some of the Baptist history mm. in Australia. So now, the Baptist history that you guys have, is that uh, mainly from the United States? Or would you, would you say a lot of the better churches that are in Australia are American missionaries? Yes. Or a lot of them native to Australia? Yeah, no. I would say uh, the majority of the better churches have been from American missionaries. Okay. Uh, but there is a lot of good uh, churches that were started by Australian nationals. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you can, you can actually tell when you walk in mm -hmm. and you just start to get through the church service, say, this kind of, it just feels different. There's mm -hmm. that, that Australian culture. Like I said, it's a little bit more relaxed, not, not as formal as uh, the American style of churches. Okay. Yeah, yeah I thought that was interesting, too. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of how they had the same thing with uh, basically the conventions. Correct. Was, was what we call them over here. I forgot what you called them. The unions. Yeah, the Baptist over unions. There. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, as you guys were going through that same uh, challenge, I think you might have been a little bit earlier for you guys, but that was plain. That was, that was that played off as well in Australia. The same same issues were going on and, and the need for separation. So what is kind of, what would you say is the, I guess, majority religion out there? You know what? I probably should have looked that up. <laughs> but I, I would almost say uh, no faith. No it, it, almost, it almost seems like, you know, atheism. And of course, when you look at the the umbrella of, of Christendom, if you want to use that term, you know, Roman Catholicism would be mm -hmm. 
definitely up there as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because like even in the states where we're at, it's mostly Catholic, Lutheran, correct things like that. But then if you go down south, it's mostly Baptist. Mm. But in the south too, just because somebody's Baptist, that does not mean they're Baptist. You know, correct. It's just culturally that's what they are, and they're just as lost as the Catholics. Right. Up north, many times. Right. But yeah, I I, I thought that was interesting. So I I really like how they're doing this. Um, you know, hearing from people from these countries, mm. explaining what it's like, kind of what kind of what they're up against, the different challenges. Yeah. So that was good. I I really, I really enjoyed that. And man, child number eleven coming. Number eleven's on its way. And yeah. How old are you? Uh, I'm thirty eight. Wow. I don't look it right. No, yeah, you don't. I'm thirty eight. You don't. <laughs> you don't. You're you're yeah. only only a year younger than me. And yeah. Well, see, my problem is when I start get white hairs, my kids start to pull it out. Um, I, I don't ask them to, but they just they just do it. So I wish I had some white hair, but <laughs> I'm just they just fall out. Yeah, is what's going on with mine. But yeah. anyway, well, I think we're gonna have to uh, shut this down here. It's gonna be service is gonna be starting in about six and a half minutes. So make sure you do not go off this live stream. Spread the word, and we're gonna hear from uh, Brother Chris Segura and Pastor Oscar Bogart, and we're gonna be hearing all about. Uh, Africa today so you definitely want to stay tuned and uh, enjoy the service and we'll uh, probably be back this evening and uh, make sure you write down the phone number call us up later if you get a chance we'd love to hear from you <laughs>